folks, we're back. This is Steve Sanson, Jim Jones with Veterans in Politics. Today we have Matthew Bowen. He's a candidate for Regent Higher System of Education, District Number One. And uh, I just um, I wanted to let folks know who the endorsed candidates are. And uh, I don't believe that uh, we talked about the ones going all the way back to the um, uh, the Senate race. So let me just read them off real quick. Um, State Senate District 1, we have um, Michelle Crawford. District 3 was no endorsement. State Senate District 5, we have Christian Bishop. Uh, District 6, no endorsement. District 7, no endorsement. District 11, no endorsement. District 18, we have Assemblyman Richard MacArthur. Uh, Regent System of Higher Education, District 1, Matthew Bowen. Uh, District 4, we have Tanya Holmes Sutton. Uh, District 11, no endorsement. Uh, State Senate District 4, we have Senator um, Dina Neal. Um, District 19, we have Chelsea Fisher. And the endorsements that we did yesterday, was it yesterday? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All the days are running together at this point, right? Um, we have um, um, State Board of Education, uh, District 1. We have Tricia Braxton, uh, Board of Education, District 3. We have Renee Cantu, uh, um, Clark County S School Board Trustee, uh, District A. We have Carl uh, Catarata, right? Yeah. And um, District... Um, uh, uh, B for the Clark County School District was no endorsement. District C was no endorsement. No endorsement. And District E we have Camellia Bywaters. So um, that was uh, five days of uh, endorsement interviews, and uh, we're going to be on the sixth day next week, Wednesday, and then one after that will be seventh. So that'll take care of all of uh, Southern Nevada. Jim, you have any rants? No, but what I want to do is I just want to personally thank every single one of the candidates that came so far to these endorsement interviews. Absolutely. There, there's a, there's an awful lot of work that goes on behind the scenes, and, and it's very important to educate the public. So just that's really all I have to say other than just I really appreciate the candidates for coming. And all the panel members. That and the panel members. Moderators. And moderators and and the marks, <laughs> the marks, and the, uh, the power company to make sure we have power for the life. And the, you know, and, the and 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 all and all the sponsors and the and the and, the, um, and, uh, and uh, I think that covers everybody. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, well, now we have Matthew Bowen, and Matthew Bowen is um, our endorsed candidate for um, for Regent uh, District Number One. And uh, and uh, we're going to have Matthew talk about his platform and, and try to get more people to vote for him. So, Mr. Bowen, how are you doing today, sir? Doing good, doing good. Tell us about yourself. Uh, where do you want me to start? From the beginning. From the beginning, all right. Um, yeah, so I'm originally from Arkansas. Okay. I was uh, raised by a single mom. And, I like uh, your haircut. Thank you. Uh, yeah. You got the same one? No, nah, you got more of a cleaner, cleaner oh. one than me, you know. I'm a little bit. You look, you look like me about day five. Yeah. <laughs> about day five. Day five. Yeah. So, um, yeah, raised by a single mom, Little Rock, Arkansas. Um, Clintons. Those, you know the Clintons? Uh, <laughs> not personally. <laughs> I am familiar. Okay. Um, uh, Little Rock, Arkansas. Y'all heard about Little Rock, Arkansas at all. It's an interesting place to be. Um, I eventually ended up moving and living with my grandparents in small Augusta, Arkansas, about 1,600 people population. Right. Was there uh, from ten to graduation. My grandpa taught school in that town for forty-two years mm -hmm. as a teacher. Uh, had the blessing on the way out to get taught by him my senior year, yeah. so that was good. Um, I did uh, some car sales for a while there in uh, Little Rock, Arkansas, and then I joined the military. Mm -hmm. Wanted to make more for my life. I have a son. What branch? Uh, Air Force. Mm -hmm. Joined the Air Force. Thank you for your service. Thank you for yours. Thank you. And um, so I wanted to make a change, make a difference, uh, join the military, um, got put in the civil engineering. I was an HVAC trade, uh, did studies in Wichita Falls, Texas for a while. Then Dallas was my first duty station out here in Las Vegas. Yeah. 
a uh, very welcoming city. It was great. It's the biggest city I've ever lived in. It's great that it smell, feels like a small feel. Um, got my first deployment in 2017, came back 2018, bought a house in North Las Vegas. So i uh, been there, got out in 2020 uh, during the pandemic, uh, started managing an HVAC company that eventually went under during the pandemic. What kind of company? HVAC. What is that? Uh, heat and ventilation and air conditioning. Oh, okay. So that's what I did in the military. So I got out. We naturally, you know, do keep to what we know. I got out. The body wasn't too willing. Mm-hmm. Starting to wear down on me. And I was like, well, it's an opportunity to try something else. So I uh, ended up launching my employee benefits uh, business in 2021. So I do. I work with small businesses here in the Valley doing employee benefits and different mm-hmm. strategies. Recently expanded to offer different financial strategies for individuals as well as business owners out here in the Valley. Mm-hmm. Big on just educating people of their resources and what's available. Okay. Tell us about your educational background. My educational background, um, I went to uh, Lyon College fresh out of high school. I had a full scholarship. I went pre-med, um, got there, and I realized, man, was I unprepared. Mm-hmm. I was unprepared. I ended up, uh, it's Lyon College now, it's was Arkansas College is the First college in Arkansas. My freshman year, I I end up uh, founding a fraternity. <laughs> my freshman year, the first minority fraternity on campus. And I noticed it wasn't very inclusive. So, <laughs> so I that was my bright idea. My freshman year, and it was I mean it worked out. And but I on the study side, I my school was a half star on five stars in Arkansas. What kind of Ar- degree you got? I don't have a degree. Okay. I have I have enough credits that would equate to a degree, but I've switched. I've probably been to I've been to five colleges now, including when I went to the military and the Air Force. I went through, of course, the trade school in the Air Force, which I got credits towards civil engineering degree. So my guess I'd probably be sitting around 150, 170 credits right now. So let me ask you something, because I, I don't I don't sit on the panel and, and ask questions. Um, but if I did, I would ask you this. Do you think that um, um, if. You, you are going for higher education, right? And what, what does that mean? You're trying to be a regent for higher education. So what does that mean to you? That means your colleges, your universities, your education past high school. So you, you, are, you are a regent um, overseeing colleges, right? And overseeing students that, that, that are trying to get their degrees. And some probably have two or three degrees, right? Don't you think you should have one as well? I mean, it depends on how you look at it. Personally, me, um, if you want experience on colleges, I've been to five. I've been physically on campus to four. I've been to one that was a private college. I've been to two community college. Well, I've been to one community college. I've been to a, a University of Central Arkansas, University of Monticello, and I went to University of Baltimore while deployed. I went to trade school in the military. Mm-hmm. I've been on campuses of all sizes, different types, as well as been a part of that transition from one from a high school that didn't prepare you into a college. And I've had that failure. I've had that failure. I understand where the miss is, but I've also been in that point transitioning out of the military, seeking that next step in that education. So you've been to five colleges? Yes, sir. And you don't have a degree? I kept changing majors. So what happened if I said I've been to five high schools and I don't have a high school diploma? How would you look at me? I would tell you there's still time. So are you going to go get your degree? Absolutely. Don't do you, cause I'm the reason why I'm bringing this up because I am pushing forth a bill to change the criteria of a, of a state board regent. Uh, uh, and I give you an example. Uh, several years ago, um, there was a there was an attorney that ran for judge and his name is Joe Bonaventure. And uh, he only had two years of practice in law and nobody thought that he was going to get elected, but he did. So they changed the criteria to five years of practice in law, saying you got to have a little bit more experience practicing law before you could be in, the court, you know, a judge in a courtroom. <clears throat> Same thing with the sheriff and uh, the sheriff, any Yahoo was running for sheriff. Doesn't matter. They they didn't have they weren't post certified. They didn't have any type of police background. Now you have to be post certified and you have to have, I believe, the minimum of five years um, police background um, or law enforcement background. 
So don't you think it should be something similar? I mean, you 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 you're trying to you're trying to be a regent for higher education. Don't you think you yourself should at least have some type of degree if you're trying to get kids or or adults that are already in the system and probably getting on their second or third degree? Don't you think that you need to be that example and and have a degree yourself? Before you become a regent, which because the, the whole purpose of it says it right there in, in, in the in the title, higher education. So if you're pushing higher education on people and say, hey, you need to go get your diploma. You need to go get your sorry, strike that. You need to go get your college degree. Don't you think you should have one, too? Or, or if you don't, isn't it a little hypocritical? Isn't it a little bit hypocritical? You're telling people go have a you need to go get your degree, get your degree, and you yourself don't own one? Well, I would, what I would push people to do is to pursue higher education okay. in whatever format. Yeah. You know, um, I'm not saying there shouldn't be a criteria added to state regent that involve college, but I would argue, would you be placing it on a certificate of completion or would you be placing it on a participation in a program? How many, like, you look at it, how, like a job, for example. I've had experience on campus. I have the hours to equate to what with someone's bachelor's degree where they could have been an athlete and they might not have went to class. They might have got the pass by. They might have got the student, like the athlete degree. You got me who I have, one, I've participated in campuses of multiple magnitudes. I have been to trade schools. I've, I've pursued high, higher education as an adult. I've went back to college after not going to college. I have went to college and failed from not being prepared for high school. What I can do for kids is transition and is give them a real life example of, hey, I know where you're coming from because I know where you're going. And I know where the pitfalls are. I know where there's a missed handoff. All right. You can get a certificate. And yeah, like I could, let's say I had a bachelor's degree. Let's say I went to high school, straight to college straight track, came back, and it's like, all right, I'm fresh out of college now. I want to be state regent. All right, you can speak to an experience that benefited you, that worked out for you. We're trying to attract and inform people that might not be so lucky. The system we have in place, if it was perfect right now, we wouldn't be trying to fix it. So we clearly need innovative ways, and sometimes that's going to come from people that ran their head against the wall and didn't break through. It's gonna be coming for people who are trying to figure out a way currently, not just for other people, but for themselves. I have an invested interest in fixing the system because I failed in the system. And I didn't just go through the system, have it all cherries and rainbows, pick it, and I come back, hey guys, I get where you're coming from. Cause you don't. So I would rather you tell me, hey, you know, I went to one college and I got my degree and you tell me I went to five and then get a degree because <laughs> that sounds better. Go to one college and get your degree and went to five and don't have your degree. Can I piggyback on that real sure. quick, Steve? Just real quick. Um, <clears throat> I understand where you're trying to come from on this, but I'm not taking, not putting words in Steve's mouth. But it's it's about completing the process. And you never completed the process. So when you're trying to promote higher education, what's to say someone like me <clears throat> go, well, you didn't finish. So why should I participate in higher education? So two part question. One, when you think about completing a process or when you talk about having the degree to teach higher education, well, let's even scale back. What is higher education to you? The whole higher education to me, the whole purpose of 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 kids or adults or whatever going to college is to have that degree, whether it's bachelor's, master's, doctrine, or even an AA, is to get degree, get the, get that degree. They're not going to well, they go to college to learn something, but they also want that degree because a lot of I mean, engineer programs, if you don't have an engineering degree, you're not going to be an engineer. If you don't have a doctoring degree, you're not going to be a doctor. So it's all about getting that degree. And when people go to college, they go to college for, hey, what program you want to? Oh, I want to be in the bachelor's program. 
Oh, I got my bachelor's. I want to be in the master's program. Oh, I have my master's. I want to be in the doctorate program. It's all about getting the degree. And if you was to take 10 college students and ask them, why are you in college? They say, well, I'm in college to get my bachelor's. I'm in college to get my master's. I'm in college to get my doctorate. But then when you yourself don't have one, how could you tell them to go get one? I, I just think it's hypocritical in my perspective. You can't tell somebody, go get it. It's like going up to a rape victim and say, I know, I, I feel your pain. I know what it's like for you to be raped. You don't know shit about what it's like to be raped because you haven't been raped. You know, it's like going back to a Marine or, or, or anybody that's serving combat and say, well, well, um, uh, and, and they went through combat and, and they did what they had to do. And they come back and you tell them, I know what it's like when you really don't fucking know what it's like because you haven't you haven't taken a life. You haven't been in combat. You don't know what it's like. But you come back and you say that. So when people tell me, hey, you know, in your in your case, hey, I, I, I want to push higher education. That's noble. That that's noble. That's great. But do you possess this higher education you're trying to push on Absolutely. everybody else? Do you have that degree? Do you have that doctorate? Do you have that bachelor's? Do you do you do you do you do you have that master's? And if and if the answer is no, then it's why not? Why don't you get your doctorate or your master's or your bachelor's degree and then be a member of the board of regent? Understandable. The opportunity here now for me is, as you said, the marketing, the branding of education and higher education for a long time has been get that degree, get that piece of paper. That has been the push. That's what we that is what we've been told from the beginning. Get that degree. And now we have a bunch of people sitting around with that degree talking about I can't get a job. I can't get nothing for this degree. We sent them in there with the idea that they just need to get that piece of paper. Just like right now, that's the conversation. Go get that piece of paper. What we actually need to do is draw parallels. Higher education is something that should be pursued because you see a benefit in it to be applied to you. Despite the piece of paper, if I'm having a conversation with you right now and I'm like, man, I really like how Steve is positioning himself in this conversation. I like how he is asking these questions. I want to be better prepared if this situation happens again. So I'm going to seek out education in which they can prepare me in that manner. We want to gear kids to want to continue to learn, period, pass the degree. Learning doesn't stop at the degree. We're, we're selling people on the idea of a piece of paper when majority of people don't have that. I graduated out of a trade school, but right now that's not good enough as higher education. But when we look at this and we want to vector kids into situations that are going to improve their lives, why don't we draw parallels to higher education that is going to directly benefit them without discrediting their path? Everyone is not. A, a, we have nursing programs. Is a two year nursing program higher education? They don't get a bachelor's program. But that's the thing. We're sitting here. We have all these corporations, all these. Oh. I apologize. We have all these businesses and opportunities around us that are looking for skill sets that don't necessarily draw a bachelor's degree or need a bachelor's degree. We should create opportunities with a clear direction out of high school for kids that isn't chasing a piece of paper, it's chasing opportunity and whatever that looks like for that person. But you're, you're a candidate for a board mm -hmm. that's pushing those degrees. Yes. Because that's what they push. Have you sat through any of those regent meetings? No. Okay. They push those degrees. I understand. So I can't be sitting on a board pushing a degree if <laughs> if I don't have one. Well, I'm, 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 my thing is, I can't be part of that group. <laughs> my thing is, I'm going to argue that maybe we are doing it wrong if this is what we've been doing for so this long. This is what we've been doing. And it, ha it hadn't been working. If no one's happy about it, you know, if that maybe. If and I didn't come on the board to be like the last people on the board mm -hmm. and to be a duplication of every process they ran before to repeat the same outcomes. I came to create a different outcome. And if and if you was to take a survey of college students and you was to ask them this one question, um, do you think your board of regent members have a degree? And probably all of them would say yes. I think they all have. Degrees. I would argue most of them wouldn't know what a board of regent was. 
Yeah. But the ones that do, let's go with the educated ones. <laughs> They'll say, yeah, I believe that they do have well, a, 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 a degree. They're all educated. They're just ill-informed or misinformed or not informed. But I would, I would argue, similar to what the branches of the military do outside of the Air Force, how many credit hours would you think you would need to spend in a collegiate program to feel like you could properly represent someone that went to a collegiate program? And if you place that at 120, where a bachelor's degree would be, then I've done it. If you talk about someone who gets a degree, just a piece of paper, well, there's a lot of ways to get a bachelor's degree without stepping foot on Let campus. Let me ask you something. What, what makes you qualified to be a, a board of regents? Let's say you were running up against somebody that has, you have no degree, okay? Your opponent has a master's, two bachelors, and probably a professor in one of those colleges, right? Who's more qualified? That's for the people to decide. I'm not. My thing is, I am not here to compete and tear down anyone else. I'm here to throw my hat in the arena and give myself opportunity to make a change. And if it's. I I hear what you're saying, but the the whole thing with, with, with candidates running for a particular race, they are competing. That's exactly what they're doing. Yeah. They are competing. They are running a race. One is trying to get ahead of the other. And it's called but you're not, trying to get ahead not, of them not, by getting not votes. The expense of me discrediting my opponent saying I'm Oh my God, they discredit people all the time. I know. <laughs> and I agree. And I'm not the position in my life where I would fall mm-hmm. subject to that typical type of thing. That's not what I would do. So what makes you qualified? I care. And me, I have I have been on the side of education to where I saw my grandfather teach high school for 42 years and have to buy his own materials, everything, and send these kids off to college. And if if the ones who, it was rare we had people who got full ride scholarships. I had one and we go and I realized how unprepared I was. The goal of higher education is to help these kids transition from high school to get that degree. If we don't know the pitfalls that are in that handoff and that transition, and we only recruit and we only have people that had that move path the whole way, then we're losing out on a whole perspective. And that's why we keep missing out on the same amount of people we miss out on year after year. We keep putting the same people with the same experience and the same vision in place, and they keep running the same play and we keep asking why it didn't work. I understand that, but let me, this is a question that I, I wanted to ask. Based on all your responses to what Steve was saying. And I missed this in the interview. It sounds to me like you should be a school board trustee because you're talking about transitioning from high school to college, not people that are already currently in college. Mm-hmm. So you went to a trade school and it worked out for you. So why, why are you running for regent and not school board trustee? Look, I have p- opinions on either side. I, like I said, I've been to five colleges. I have been physically on campus to four of them. I have the hours that you would equate to a bachelor's degree I have, a, uh, I have completed. Just because I'm not sitting here with a piece of paper in front of you, I can come back with credits from my schools if you want to see the slips. Well, I can 100% agree with what you're saying, but you need to answer this, please, and I'll, I'll be nice. But seriously, school board trustee probably would have been a better way to go just because, like, the regent. Like can can you because you keep talking about it, you don't necessarily need a piece of paper, and I hundred percent agree with you. I mean, I have two college degrees, and I can guarantee you, Steve Sampson no, is I, a heck of a lot smarter I, I, than I, I, I am. But don't get me wrong; I think you need to go for higher education. Okay. I yeah, I have sure. participated in so many levels of higher education, leadership schools. I go to seminars now and learn. I read books today. Don't get it twisted. Education never stops. Education is from day one to the end. When you tell people that it stops at that piece of paper, that's where the problem is. That's what I'm saying. That's not what I'm saying. I didn't say it stops. I know. I know that's not what you were saying. I'm saying that the the board pushes that. Yes. And you need to have one yourself if you're going to go push it. I'm not necessarily. And I'm going to tell you why. I don't know where you grew up, but I grew up in a, uh, the Delta of Arkansas, and it's a lot of poverty. New York City. Yeah. So wow. then, so you'll understand what I'm about to say now. Have you ever met anybody that was that first generation college graduate? 
Could that mother not tell them why they should go to college? Have you not met that person in the military that made a few wrong turns and just because they didn't get where you wanted to get, you wasn't going to listen to them and tell them? Sometimes it's better hearing it from all sides. Well, it's always better hearing it from yeah, all sides. So you, you're in the Air Force. Yes, sir. And what, what was your specialty? What was he, heating, ventilation, air conditioning. And you took a test, didn't you? Yes, sir. And after the test, you were certified, weren't you? And yes, sir. No different than being a border region. And you got a piece of paper saying you're certified, yes, sir. didn't you? Yes, sir. You went to five colleges. You should have got a piece of paper. Depends on, <laughs> depends on why I went. Say, saying that you have a I bachelor's. Didn't, I, didn't go, I didn't go to get a piece of paper, Steve. Huh. I didn't go to get a piece. If I went to get a piece of paper, I would have had a piece of paper. I wouldn't have realized, hey, I was in pre-med. I sat in the classes. I realized that's not what I wanted to do. So I pivoted. And I was like, I was in sports my whole life. Let me see what I can do that is similar to my desire, but more towards something I would like. So I shift gears to kinesiology. So when you when you went to when you first went to college, what was in your mindset? Just to just, yeah, yeah, I was just gonna, I'm going to pay all this tuition fee and until ride. until. Oh, so you had a full ride. Mm -hmm. So you, you're going to I'm going to I'm going to sit in the classroom all this time to get what? <laughs> my my I, I was actually planning on being a robotic surgeon when I went and I wasn't focused on a four year degree. That's not a four year degree. I don't even know what it was at the time. I where I was from. I mean, I didn't really have the vision of a long term goal. I didn't see the people around me weren't getting degrees. Yeah. They were pushing people like if you can make it, just go to college. Figure it out. Just get out. And I saw that this isn't a situation to where it's like, oh, we're all just locking arms. We're going into college. Freshman year is off. I, I went. Nobody else I knew was there. I, I saw my first rich person there. I saw a bunch of stuff that I was never exposed to as a child or never educated on going into it. You know, it's when I went to college, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to do. And then when I switched schools, it's the same thing. And this is speaking on kids that are in college currently, because we want to improve the outcomes of the people who do spend the money to get into the college. And I have been a product in multiple systems of that process. All right. Well, I like your perspective. Yeah. yeah. But I, I think that that you should have a degree. <laughs> I, I, I will say this. I, I don't. I, if there was a time to where every board of regents was elected and neither one of them stepped foot on the campus, I wouldn't agree with that. 100%. 100%. And I understand where you're coming from, given the way it's structured right now. Highly undoubtedly, doubtable as it may be, is open for that to be a possibility. And that is something that wouldn't be beneficial to the board of regents at all. But I would argue that we at least need to have perspective on the board if we want to reach all parties and make sure that we can speak to all parties. And that's I mean, that creates that diversity. Okay. Jim, uh, just I, I have one last question. One of the things and I missed this when we were doing the endorsement interviews, and I apologize I didn't ask this question. Job placement. Do you think there should be a job placement program? For, because we we hear the story all the time, right? People get that piece of paper, right? And they can't find a job. So um, this is actually something that I, for me, education is all about, you have to be able to utilize the education you're getting. Like if you go for four years and you get a degree or you get two degrees and you can't use it, that is that is a waste of time. Now you have a piece of paper that, chose people that you showed up on time and you completed something. That's essentially it. We have companies out here today that are at the pinnacle of their industry, like hospitality industry. Like this is the top place for hospitality, injury law. This is one of the top places for injury law. Like I could even see a school of arts, something like that. We have to identify the opportunities that are out here 
and lean into that part of our education. If we try to just rise all parts, money gets dispersed, money gets waste. Draw these parallels. Go out to these companies. Hey, uh, Caesars, if we put money into this program and we boost our hospitality, we boost our event planning, we boost these programs, how many internships can you give us for students in their third year, in their fourth year? Because y'all are the ones that are going to benefit the most for us pouring money into these educations. We should have the top school for hospitality in the nation. Why don't we? Because we're not branding it as that. We're not marketing it as that. We got kids going out there and they're like, if I just get this bachelor's degree, I'm good. We need to draw the path for them. Be like, hey, look, in Vegas, we have the top program for this and it'll get you right here. They need to be able to look at the skyline and see opportunity instead of see the, the spending money on casinos, see the parties, see all this. Same with all the lawyers. We should have the top school to study injury law in the nation. And I'm not saying we don't, but it hasn't been advertised. So, you know, these are things where you can go to the Nagvis, you can go to the Demopolises and be like, hey, we're going to put money into this area. We need internships. We need op- Y'all are going to benefit the most from this. And those are the people that you come back to in a year or two and be like, hey, we need repayment pro- programs. We need grants. You know, we need stuff like that because y'all are going to benefit the most from this. Hollywood's coming here. Why don't we have a school of fine arts? We have people singing and dancing on the strip for a long time. We don't have to market this to the children graduating high school. If they want to dance, they want to act, we can put them in a position to actually do it the right way. But we have to build these programs, highlight these programs and create these avenues and paint the picture for them. Don't have them going out there wanting to be a robotic surgeon when their school was a half star in high school. Let's be realistic. I I have no more questions than what you just did. Is there anything that you want to say that we haven't covered? Honestly, I I just appreciate this opportunity. It was y'all were the first people to reach out to do the interview with, to do the endorsement. And man, this is my first, I always wanted to get into politics and the fact that it was y'all and I got to sit down with y'all and talk to y'all is a blessing because, you know, this arena can be scary. This arena can be different. It's ruthless, but, you know, to know that there's other people that come from where you come from or support you in this arena is a blessing. And Vegas in a whole has been great to me as a transplant, as a veteran, and it's just good to see that even though I go on this other venture, there's still people that are supporting me. Thank so I appreciate y'all. Thank well, you. Well, Matthew Bowen, Mark's going to zoom in on you and you have the final word and give you a point of contact, website, phone number. Thank you. Hey, my name is Matthew Bowen, and um, I'm here to bring innovation and change to the region position of District 1. You can contact me at Email Matt, M-A-T-T, B-O-933 at gmail.com. Phone number 870-919-5795. Website's coming. Thank you. Thank you so much, Matthew. Thanks, Jim. Folks, that's Matthew Bowen, Region Higher Higher System of Education for District Number 1. And he's also our endorsed candidate um, for the Joint Veterans Endorsement. This is Steve Sanson. Jim Jonas of Veterans and Politics. Until next time.